First of all, if I could start the service by welcoming you all here today in behalf of the family. It really does mean an awful lot to the family for you taking the time to be here today to respect and honour the life of our Liz. Liz, born the 16th of November 1963 in Govan, Glasgow, one of seven to Margaret and James. Happy childhood growing up with her sisters Anne, Kate and Maggie and her brothers Thomas, Jim and Phil. Memories of growing up in the Bundy and Pollock, always out playing, I'm told, making dens in the woods and playing hoosies. She attended St Ignatius Primary and then on to Bellamine Secondary. Liz enjoyed school. She was shy but talented and loved her art. On leaving school, Liz went on to Langside College to take on a hairdressing course. She qualified as a hairdresser and went straight into the world of work, working in a salon in Shawlands and spent two happy years there. Liz now entering her punk rocking days here and I'm told she was a most beautiful punk rocker and Jim sharing the memories of our Liz of the time him and his pal Steg were out playing in the street <laughs> and they saw all these punks walking towards them different colours of hair and piercings, big boots and big chains on shit themselves <laughs> and here they were about to start slagging them off until Steg said to Jim here is that no your sister and it sure was Liz had invited them all back for a party in her mum and dad's house and Phil having the memories of them all dancing with the pogo and Phil up dancing and creating riot in the house and during Liz's punk days, this is when Liz would meet Donna, and Donna became a lifelong friend. She was with Liz through thick and thin. Always, always there for one another. And when Donna passed in 2015, this really did affect Liz greatly. She missed her pal. Liz left the salon and, and moved to London and Liz had no home really so she squatted and she, she quite happily squatted and Anne telling the story that how she would move from house to house literally with a mattress on her back she didn't care she was loving life in London she was living in Dorset, she lived in Brighton and other beach hotspots along the way and dropping in to see her brother Tam in Bristol. Liz decided to move to Edinburgh, living in the same street as Sean Connery did as a young boy. And she got a job as a bus driver, an actual bus driver. And she spent a few years doing that. Her and Tam would have a trip to New York together before carrying on to visit her sister Kate in Missouri. And her sister Kate joins us here today on the webcam in America. So nice to have you with us, Kate. Liz ended up living in Kansas City. She started working for a very wealthy family who had their own private helicopter. No bad for some, eh? Did you have your private helicopter, Jim? Blunderson Drive. It was in your head when you were on the ganja. <laughs> they had their own private helicopter and, and Liz was really living the high life. She was flown everywhere with this family to Texas trips. The family were very kind to Liz, I'm told, and Liz really did have the best time there. Of course, Liz being Liz, the free spirit that she was, never staying too long in one place, came back to Scotland. 
Kotake, a little village in Angus, is where she moved to, and the Earl of, Earl of Early was her landlord. And Anne sharing the memories of 1995, the early hours of Christmas Day, the snow came on heavily, and it hadn't done in many, many years. Liz and Anne, Michael, Betty, and Mick all went outside. Obviously, had a few drinks in them. All went outside. They were all messing about, snowball fights and dancing and partying in the snow. A memory cherished forevermore. Granting on Spain, Liz would also move here, living with her sister Maggie, looking after her nephews Ryan and Kieran, and ended up doing some hotel work there. On to 2011, and Liz found her happy place in 196 Houselwood Road. And this is where Liz found her love, believe it or not, for gardening. She became a wee green finger. <laughs> a great one for herbal remedies, shall we say. <laughs> and would be known to give advice and medicines your way, should you require them. Liz, I'm told, was content here, reconnected with all our old pals from back in the day and enjoying attending music gigs at the Clutha Vaults, watching her beloved Celtic, of course, as she did all her life, and never lost faith in her God. March this year, Liz had some health issues and from this was diagnosed with cancer. Liz decided to take alternative medicine and she was going to deal with it her way. Liz carried on with such bravery. We, Helen and Claire, played a major part in caring for Liz, arranging doctor's appointments, taking them to the doctors, nurses, staying over, doing her shopping. They were really hands-on and looking after Liz. She fought well, never one to complain, taking everything in her stride. And sadly, on the 9th of August, at 12.25 a.m., our wee warrior passed peacefully at the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital with Jim and Maggie by her side. I'd asked the family to give me some words to describe her, Liz. Free spirit, loving, brave, a gentle soul, beautiful, poetic, a rebel, of course, and a healer. And she loved our conspiracy theories. <laughs> Liz walked alone and with others. I'd like to invite Anne, um, who is going to read a poem for us today. Okay, the poem is called She is Irish. A strange blend of shyness, of pride and conceit, and a stubborn refusal to bow in defeat. She's spoiling and ready to argue and fight. Yet the smile of a child fills her soul with delight. Her eyes are the quickest to warm up in tears, and her strength is the strongest to banish your fears. Her hate is as fierce and her devotion is grand, and there is no middle ground on which she will stand. She's wild and she's gentle, she's good and she's bad. She's proud and she's humble, she's happy and sad. She's in love with the ocean, the earth and the skies. She's enamored with beauty wherever it lies. She's victor, she's victim, a star and a clod. But mostly she's Irish in love with her God. Cheers. Thank you, Anne. See, she did well. She was frightened, she was scared. It was lovely, thank you. Take a moment now and we're going to look back on Liz's life through pictures and of course you can touch on your own memories and thoughts.
of our lives. Goodbye to you, my trusted friend. We've known each other since we were nine or ten. Together we've climbed hills and trees. Learned of love and ABC. Skinned our hearts and skinned our knees. Goodbye, my friend, it's hard to die. When all the birds are singing in the sky. Now that the spring is in the air. Pretty girls are everywhere. Think of me and I'll be there. We had joy, we had fun, we had seasons. Seasons out of time. Goodbye, Papa. Please pray for me. I was the black sheep of the family. You tried to teach me right from wrong. Too much wine and too much song. Wonder how I got along. Goodbye, Papa. It's hard to die. Singing in the sky Now that the spring is in the air Little children everywhere When you see them I'll be there We had joy, we had fun We had seasons in the sun But the wine and the song Like the seasons have all gone find the sun and every time that I was down you would always come around and get my feet back on the ground goodbye Michelle it's hard to die when all the birds are singing in the sky now that the spring is in the air with the flowers everywhere both be there. We had joy, we had fun, we had seasons in the sun, but the stars we could reach were just starfish on the beach. The family would like to give a couple of thanks, firstly to the hospital staff for all that they did for Liz and looking after her. Tam and the team today from the Co-op Funeral Care in Cardonald for their guidance and support leading up to today, and of course, family and friends for cards, flowers, and good wishes. Jim and we Helen for taking the time off work, Jim, organising everything and keeping the family updated throughout. Obviously, our friends here at the Hurlet for organising the picture tribute and the room today. This is the end of our service here and now we will continue and take Liz to rest at St. Convals. If you're able to join us, then that would be lovely and that you're more than welcome. And if you can't, join us, then you are invited back to the Cavendish for small refreshments, shall we say. Uh, and the family would, would love to see you there. Again, to each and every one of you, thank you for taking the time to be here today to honour our Liz and her life. Thank you.